Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch action genre movie called The A Walk Among the Tombstone. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. 1991 in New York City Detective Matt Scudder is driving his partner. He then walks into a bar where cops are not required to pay for their drinks. Matt is served two shots and a cup of coffee by the bartender. Then two jerks barge in and try to steal some money. When the bartender says no, they shoot him in the chest, prompting Matt to draw his gun and shoot back. He dashes into the street and shoots one man. The second man in the third vehicle drives away. While the final man, Matt shoots the driver. Matt grabs his thigh and follows him down the stairs. Matt dispatches him. We see a woman lying down with her eyes wide open during the opening credits. A man kisses her on the cheek. Then we notice another man standing next to him. The woman also has tape around her mouth. A tear streams down her cheek. Eight years later, Matt, now a sober man, is about to eat at a diner when a junkie named Peter approaches him, asking for help for Peter's brother. Matt initially appears uninterested, but he follows Peter out and then joins him at the home of his brother, Kenny Christo. Kenny is aware of Matt's work as a private investigator and offers him $20,000 to find the men who kidnapped and murdered his wife, despite Kenny having paid the ransom they demanded. Matt discovers that Kenny is a drug trafficker and refuses to assist him. Matt returns to his apartment and discovers Kenny waiting outside. Through a flashback, he tells her his wife's name, Carrie, to reassure Matt that he did care about his wife. We see the moment Kenny received the phone call from the kidnappers demanding a $500,000 ransom, while Kenny tried to bargain with them for $400,000. The main kidnapper threatened Kenny with one of Carrie's breasts to prove he wasn't joking. Kenny complied, bringing the money to the location specified and waiting for Carrie to return to the car. She never showed up. He was then instructed to search the trunk of an old car in Red Hook. There were a lot of bags in there. Kenny picked one up and cut it open, spilling blood everywhere. Matt, Kenny hands, and a tape recorder found in the trunk. After Kenny leaves, Matt listens to it, which contains a recording of the kidnappers harming Carrie while she screams. This gives Matt reason. Matt searches Red Hook for leads. He does know that the kidnappers were most likely connected to the D. Everyone he asks says they saw a van and two men near where Carrie was last seen. Everyone Matt asks gives him a different name than the one on the van. Matt goes to the library to look for articles on similar killings because the two men keep repainting the van. He reads about two victims named Marie Eskin and Layla Anderson in two articles. TJ, a street kid, is standing behind him. Matt requests his assistance in looking for additional articles. They discover that a florist discovered a leg in a dumpster and that other bags containing body parts were discovered in a cemetery pond. Matt then takes TJ to the diner for pancakes. Matt visits the cemetery to talk to the groundskeeper, Lujan Jonas. He has suppressed the memory of discovering the deceased woman in all those bags and is upset when Matt brings it up. TJ follows Matt to an apartment, hoping to assist him with his investigation. Matt leaves him and goes to Layla's fiancé Ruben's apartment, where he questions him about the last time he saw Layla. He was supposed to meet her at a cafe, but he saw her being led into a van by two men in a third vehicle. Matt suspects Reuben of drug trafficking as well. Matt looks out the window and notices a bird cage on the rooftop of the building across the street. He goes to that building and discovers a shed at the top that belongs to Jonas, and it contains a page from a book he was working on, as well as pictures of Reuben and Layla having sex. Jonas enters the room and pulls out a knife. Matt persuades him to put it down. Jonas admits to being the driver when he and the other two men abducted Layla. He didn't like the fact that she was doing drugs with Reuben, so he plotted with the two men to take her away and keep her. Instead, they had Jonas drive to a location where he saw the main kidnapper cutting her blouse open and asking her which breast she preferred while chopping off the other. Jonas ran away from the scene. Matt inquires as to where he can locate them. Before jumping off the roof and landing on a car, Jonas feeds his birds and gives Matt the name Ray. We meet the two kidnappers Ray and Albert in their home, where they are reading about Y2K fears as they drive by another drug trafficker's house. Yuri, they come across Yuri's pre-adolescent daughter Layla, better known as Lucia, walking her dog. As she passes the men's van, she quickly waves. Ray is smitten by her. Matt later goes to an apartment where he is assaulted by the owner's son, presumably because they have been repeatedly accused of murdering her. They inform Matt that she was a cop who was also involved in drug dealing. Matt encounters TJ in the streets who is now armed with a gun. He, Matt instructs him on how to use it and then advises TJ to shoot himself in the head because that is all that can happen if he carries it. The next day, Matt is followed by a man exiting a van carrying East Village plumbing supply, similar to the one used by the kidnappers. Matt enters an apartment and conceals himself. He wraps a scarf around his fist and asks the man to peer through the window before smashing it into the man's face. Matt then discovers the man is an agent with his colleagues. They take Matt in a van and drop him off after he asks about Marie 
and receives a negative response. Matt enters Peter's apartment, where he is about to shoot up dozens of nude paintings of Carrie as Peter was madly in love with her. Matt instructs him to inform Kenny that he will return his money because he no longer wishes to be involved in this case. TJ is found in the rain by two punks who want their gun back. They beat him with his backpack after he tells them he threw it in the river. Matt tracks him down at Bellevue Hospital. The doctor there informs him that TJ has sickle cell anemia, which was caused by either the rain or the assault. When TJ awakens, he asks Matt why he quit being a cop. Matt reveals that during the opening scene shootout, one of the bullets accidentally struck a seven-year-old girl in the eye, killing her. Ray and Albert break into the Lando home and tase the dog before tasing and kidnapping Lucia after she attends to her sick mother. Peter locates Matt and transports him to the Lando residence, where the kidnappers have called and demanded a ransom for Lucia. Fury answers and tries to bargain, but Matt takes the phone from him and tells Ray that if Lucia is harmed, they won't get a cent. They plan a drop after Ray proves that the girl is safe. Matt dials TJ's number. He left him and asked him to go to his house, get a box, and give it to him. Because TJ did not trust Peter alone with the box, Matt, Kenny, Peter, Yuri, and TJ all go to the cemetery to meet with the kidnappers. With a rifle in hand, Peter is hiding behind the tombstones. They exchange words, despite the fact that Lucia's hands are bloodied, and Ray remarks that this occurred before the conditions were set. Albert takes the money as the girl returns to her father. He realizes it's a forgery and tries to warn Ray before Matt pulls out his gun and shoots Ray twice in the chest, though his bulletproof vest saves him. Albert fires at everyone, striking Peter, while Matt manages to injure Ray in the side. While Matt and Kenny tend to a dying man, the kidnappers flee in their van. Peter. Peter tries to confess his feelings for Carrie, but because he can only say I love, Kenny interprets it as an admission of brotherly love and returns it. Matt goes to his car and notices that TJ is missing. TJ crept into the back of the kidnapper's van and followed them to their destination. He learns the street name and informs Matt, while Ray and Albert work to repair Ray's bullet wound. They go downstairs, where Albert strangles Ray with the garage door. He returns upstairs to eat. When Matt, Kenny, and TJ enter the house, Matt binds Albert to a pipe and hands him over to Kenny. Matt hires a cab to take TJ back to his apartment. Kenny hits Albert over the head with a bottle and goes downstairs to look for him. Albert manages to break free. Matt decides to return inside and complete the task, recalling the 12 steps he heard. He discovers a bloody scene at the NA meeting and discovers Kenny dead downstairs, with a pool of blood around the steps. Matt falls down the stairs after slipping on the blood. Albert almost kills Matt with the garage, but he fights back. Matt takes the taser from Ray's pocket and zaps Albert in the groin twice. Matt picks up a gun from the ground and shoots Albert in the head. TJ is sleeping on the couch when Matt returns home. He notices TJ's drawing of himself as a superhero. Matt takes a seat and slowly closes his eyes. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.